So let me show you a couple of small drugs that are actually on the market and being used to treat disease. There are five of them, I think, yes. All of these are small, quite hydrophobic drugs. There are some aromatic rings in all of them. There are hydrogen bond donors here, some NH groups, and the acceptors, that's the oxygen. All of these have chemical names that don't tell us a whole lot, but for some of them, I'll tell you the marketing names too. Olanzapine is a so-called neuropharmacological drug that is something that's treating our nervous system, in this case, schizophrenia, the so-called indication. This particular one is an antagonist that's targeting a whole range of receptors in the nervous system. Pilocarpine is another, this is an agonist instead of an antagonist. Uh, it's interesting because it's 100 years old. Uh, I'll come back to that on the next slide, but it's related to where do we find these drugs in the first place? And this one occurred in nature. It's used to treat glaucoma in your eyes. If you've ever had a runny nose, you might have taken the small drug Otrivine, right? Otrivine on the bottle, that's just the marketing name for Um Again, nasal decongestion is the indication, and uh, this targets adrenergic receptors. Uh, it's an agonist, too. And then we have two more here, cimetidine and the ciprasidone. Um, cimetidine is targeting ulcer heartburn, just like AstraZeneca's low sick drug. And ciprasidone is another drug targeting the nervous system, in this case used as an antipsychotic. And both of them are antagonists, just to give you some taste of it. Historically, the usual place for us to find drugs was simply nature even rainforests. Um, and this could be that either folklore or indigenous population or something, they knew that if you're having a bit of pain or something, you should usually eat a bit of this drug and then it goes away. That's how we discovered cocaine, for instance, uh, that the Indians would eat cocaine when they were tired or something. They would chew the, uh, the leaves of the coca bush, right? And then eventually we were able to purify that and get the compound cocaine in pure form. There are several examples of that. Uh, Turbocurine is a muscle relaxant. Uh, cortisone is used for birth control. Quinine is used for malaria. Um, I could probably find 20 more if I look them up. But the one on the previous slide, pilocarpine, is fun. Uh, so over 100 years ago, people realized that a certain plant had the property that it helps against glaucoma in the eyes. Uh, I think it was in 18, let's see, yes, 1874 this was isolated from the small plant called Pilocarpus. And that's what it looks like. And of course, since then, today we know what the structure of the receptor is. We know exactly how it worked molecularly and everything. The patents on this drug has long since expired. But it's an example that today we understand the molecular basis, while 100 years, 150 years ago even, things were more phenomenological. Understanding the molecular basis is good in many ways, but it also means that we tend to have much higher requirements that it can't be toxic and it must be efficient today, which poses some challenges for us.